saw what you should have. The veil pulled back from the secret world and the monsters who prowl it. You chronicled the tragedies they wrought, these monsters, and the victims upon whom they preyed. You grasped the extent of their influence and witnessed the corruption of the organization's form to keep them in check. And you vowed to do something about it. Tonight you act. It's time for a reckoning. Welcome to Hunter the Reckoning, Roadhouse Blue is a dark and tragic story set in the world of darkness. I am Tyler, Elder Chekos on Twitter, and I am your storyteller for this tale of obsession and horror. Before we continue, we'd like to remind you that due to mature themes of horror and violence explored in our tale, we encourage listener discretion. We are Vorpal Tales, and we play a wide assortment of games seven days a week, sometimes twice a day. To know more about them, go to our website at VorpalTales.com to see our calendar and to join our Discord, where you will get notifications of all new shows. Follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Tales and YouTube at youtube.com slash c slash Tales, where there are literally hundreds of past episodes, adventures, campaigns, and stories to explore. Very special thanks to Dark Somnium Music, Savic, Epidemic, Sound, Aim to Head Official, and to me for providing some of the awesome music you'll hear. Thanks to Roll20 Tabletop for providing an excellent virtual platform for us to run many of our games, and last but not least... A warm thanks to our listeners and fans for tuning in and experiencing our stories with us. With me are the hardened, the desperate, and the obsessed. Hunters, let the audience know who you are and who you're playing. Hey everybody, I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they. You can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, because it's me, Am Changeling. You can also find me on Etsy at Thornkind, and tonight I will be playing Yuri Glazov. Hello, my name is Rachel. You can find me Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere on the internet. And tonight I am playing Tabitha, a Redeemer con artist. She's complicated. You, hey, Big Dad here, Ben. I'm playing Walt Cordell, Line Cook Defender. Hello, I am Rosie, regular size mom, and tonight I am playing Judith Burns, a author visionary? Yes, that is her creed. She's a visionary. And hello, I am Savannah. You can find me online as Miss Missy Mofox. Um, tonight I am playing Pamela Moore. Um, I don't know, I'm plucky what I have written down. Excellent. 
All right, Pam, tell us about last time. Oh, yeah, 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 that thing. <clears throat> so, the bar is under heavy attack. Noelle, her eyes, now jet black, lunges at Gwen and the book. Meanwhile, Chuck feels something trying to take him over. Gwen grapples Declan and tries to tie him up with bar towels. She calls out for help and an old man sweeps Declan to the ground before dropping some sort of worked metal sigil on him. He can't move. Noelle tries to throw off the possession, but it doesn't work. Another hunter tries to go for the book when her own husband shoots her. Chuck goes for the book, but gets an elbow in the throat for her troubles. As Gwyn finishes wrestling Declan to the ground, he vomits out the black smoke possessing him. To Gwyn's eyes, all the possessed people now look like Ed. Fuck all this dancing around, says Ed, or the thing looking like him. He smashes the bar in half while Chuck takes his beer-blessed sledgehammer and goes for Ed's balls. Ed's still going for Gwyn, who decides that since the bar towel trick worked on Declan, she should try it for Ed as well. Declan is back to himself, and weight no longer works on him. He tosses the enchanted weight to Gwen. She drops it on Ed, whose flesh begins to smoke as he starts screaming. That's when Brennan rips the book from Gwen's arms and runs out of the bar. The demon leaves Ed, now unconscious. Gwen grabs the weight off Ed and throws it at Brennan. It drops him, but the book goes flying and Jesse catches it and flees. Gwen and Declan together triage the injured. Noel heads down to the basement to begin investigating. Gwen manages to stabilize Chuck and Ed. Brennan, however, remains unconscious. Declan goes to the hunter, who unwillingly shot his own wife, and does his best to offer comfort. It seems to work as much as one can offer comfort in such a situation. Down in the basement, Gwen uncovers some information about an incident back in 1996. There's very little in the news, but she does read a few local stories that a dangerous animal was intentionally let loose by a psychopath trying to cover up a string of murders. Several people also died in the line of fire, trying to bring in both the psychopath and his dangerous pet. Two hours later, a pair of helicopters land in the nearby empty lot. Declan, Declan recognizes one of his contacts, Scotty. Scotty asks for a moment of Declan's time, and Declan takes him downstairs. Gwen is nominated to wrangle interference between Scotty and his followers? Fans? They interrogate Gwen about what happened here, identifying themselves as the Society of Leopold. Back in the bar basement, Declan explains the situation to Scotty, especially the possession. After some wrangling, the priest agrees to heal Ed and Chuck. Two more hours, and the Society of St. Leopold has finally left us alone, and we've ameliorated the damage as much as possible. Before leaving the Society of St. Leopold has made it clear we're to let them handle what's going on. Noelle shares what she's uncovered in the basement as we decide what to do next. We're all driven to resolve this, for various different reasons and in various different ways. Gwen, Ed, and Declan devise some wards to protect against any future possessions attempts, while Chuck fashions some custom bullets. Team Ward manages to come up with some tattoos that should protect against future possession, and Noelle finds a likely address to follow up on our leads with. But she also follows up. She notices Society of Leopold on the same trail. Meanwhile, Declan finds some names of entities who might be involved in this. After working through the night, we meet up the next morning to pool information and give tattoos. Chuck gives Ed's gun an Ed Hardy treatment. Once we're done, we load up into Declan's car and go investigate the place Noelle found. It's overgrown and weed-ridden, and there's an old rusty gate between us and the once nice house. Declan decides to ram the gate and smash it open. Three shots ring out, blowing out the tires. It's time to bail out for cover. Declan yells out something about looking for Jesse, but the only response is another shot out tire. Gwen tries sneaking through the underbrush to get closer to the house. Meanwhile, Chuck decides to go loud and wires up Declan's jeep to explode, but Ed tries to stop him as he's still in the jeep. Meanwhile, Declan senses three entities in the house. The jeep takes off on its own towards the house and explodes close enough to the house to shatter the windows and blow open the doors. And then it explodes again, taking out Chuck and Gwen completely. Declan suggests leaving, just as Noelle's cell phone rings. Ta-da! Thank you. Jeep.
Judy. Tell us about your life on the island in 1996. Well... It's not so much my life. I just go there in the summers, you know, relax and edit what I've written during the year. Um, so it's just nice and quiet and it's just me and my work because I like to do uh, hand editing. I mean, typewriters are nice, but being able to just go over everything with a pen is very soothing. book you're working on this summer i haven't come up with a title for it yet uh but it's a sort of fantasy sci-fi erotica that's meant to really push the boundaries of what we think of as a relationship uh my goal is always to liberate the American housewife in her boring world because I believe that's necessary for the growth of the next generation. And why is it you've decided to attend the parade? It'd be weird if I didn't. Okay. It's the Midsummer Parade for the rest of you to know. It happens on the island every year. Lots of food vendors. Lots of booze. Lots of tourists. Not quite Mardi Gras. We're close. Horses, other cool animals, floats, you know. Pam, tell us about your summers on the island. Uh, Pam works in the stables during the summer. Uh, her mother watches her young son, Declan. Um, while she works the summers on the islands where she makes the majority of her money for them to survive off of the rest of the year. Why are you attending the parade? Uh, I'm required to. I wrangle the horses. I am there to ensure the safety of the public, but mostly to ensure the safety of the horses from idiotic tourists. Gabby, why did you decide to vacation on the island this summer? Uh, things got too hot in Vegas, and so I'm moving to the Midwest looking for some softer marks. Okay. Why the parade? Lots of marks at a parade. Walt. Hello. Why would you vacation here? I work here. Where? Uh, I am a night cook at a bar. Which one? Name one. Is there like a shitty one that makes me stay late? Yes. You got a cool name in mind? I don't know. Some, some kind of street house. I don't know. The Purple uh, Stallion. Sure. Suggestion. What was the name of the bar in the Flash Forward? Good question. You've only ever called it the Roadhouse. I think we called it Roadhouse in the in the recap. <laughs> I think so too. Also, excellent pronunciation of ameliorate. Oh, yay, I did it. <laughs> Yuri. Why vacation here? Vacation? I've always lived here. Why? I work in the mechanic shop. So what is it you work on? No cars on the island. Cars? For the government. The, car, the cars that don't come here? The, the government has cars. Government does have You work cars. on boat engine. Oh. Yes, I, I work on the boat engines and um, okay. cars. And also. weed whacker tool. <laughs> I have been well, on the fixed tractor. Riding okay. lawnmower. A couple golf cart. <laughs> yeah, one time I fixed up horse's leg. I was really desperate. A lot of duct tape. <laughs> You'll see, horse and car are very similar. Why here? There's um, no reason. If I told you, I perhaps would have to kill you. Comrade. Mm. Mm. 
And what is it you tell the locals when they ask why someone of your accent lives here on this Midwestern island? I, I was born here in the Midwest. I am USA number one patriot. <laughs> Sorry, I played a character with a similar voice. Uh, Who was also a mechanic. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, no? I'm talking about uh, uh, fucking... You don't mean Mikhail? No, I'm talking about the werewolf. Oh, gotcha. Sergey. Yeah. I think I have known a Sergey. What do you do when they tell you they don't believe you? Eh. They go take a swim in the lake and they'll come back. You charge them extra. So I charge them a little extra. Perhaps the engine goes clink, clink, clink afterwards. Eh, maybe explosion or two. You have thrown a rod. It's expensive part. Uh, Gasket. Have you ever tried to commit crimes on the island? What the crimes? I am an upstanding citizen. You just said explosion. That's why I'm asking. I don't Kids, know what you're you talking have, you about. would have been caught. There's like a hundred people here in the winter. But I thought... <clears throat> uh, you know, I um, don't know. Look, I have someone in the shop. I have a card to fix. I'll see you later. Why the parade? It's exciting. It's festivity. Yay. So, the parade commences at 7 p.m. It is 6. What are y'all doing? Uh, I'm where the horse, or like where they're collecting the horses. I'm sure they uh, erected a round pen to corral the horses uh, to for in preparation for the parade. Making sure they all have their accoutrements and regalia on to make them look pretty in France. What about the rest of you? I am on a smoke break. Um, I'm probably got a picture of uh, what are open carry law like a beer or like I don't mean beer like she would have sangria or something like that. Uh, I don't know if that's legal. Put it in a thermos. No one will know. Perfect. And it'll uh, stay cool and delicious. There you go. The national drink of Spain. What kind of thermos in 1996? I have no idea. Heavy metal ones that you could beat a guy with. Didn't they have like those red Coleman ones? They did. Um, I'm going to go with something uh, heavy duty, though, because she's expecting to be out most of the day and she wants to be able to spot it when she puts it down after finishing most of the thermos. Okay. Who else? I'm I'm showing up early to get um, a sense of the place. Okay. What about Yuri? Uh, what, what am I doing? Yes, it's an hour before the start of the parade. Hey, I'm seeing if they have the fireworks. So you're trying to sneak into the area where the fireworks would be? No, I'm helping. Uh, they just don't know it yet. <laughs> so you're trying to sneak in somewhere you shouldn't be? No, not not at all. I, I'm asking, hey, you need help with the fireworks. I am oh, good I with it. Okay. So Tabitha and Judith you and maybe 30 or 40 other people scattered up and down a long uh, street are already setting up early with the little uh, Coleman chairs and getting good positions in the front. You two happen to notice each other because you're pretty close to each other. The only other person you notice is are you uh, Russian, Yuri? Whatever would make you say that. <laughs> so that I can identify your country properly. I'm American. Yes, but what's your accent? Russian? Ukrainian? It is from Michigan. Yes, it is the deep Michigan accent. 
I am from Toledo. So perhaps I sold the secrets to the U.S. about the Russia, and uh, that is how I became here. But are you Russian? Not anymore. Okay. So Tabitha and Judith, the only other interesting thing you see is some guy with a Russian accent bugging everyone involved with the parade about fireworks. And they're all cold shoulder in this guy. I'm sorry, what did you say we see him doing? Bugging every official inside about fireworks. Okay. Um, Judith is probably looking for somewhere to post up with her lawn chair um, and get a, at least a, a good view of the start of the parade. So she just sort of like keeps The best him. position on the street is right next to Tabitha. Okay. Then that's where she posts up and she offers uh, Tabitha a uh, bit of her sangria. You check her out, Tabitha. This is a good mark. There's money on this one. Uh, yeah, thank you for... I'm so sorry that was very poorly timed. Let's do uh, it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tabitha. Oh, uh, thank you. Do you live here? Uh, no, I just summer here. It's so nice and remote and quiet. It's very quiet. It's it's my first time here. Uh, what what sort of parade is this? Rosie doesn't remember. The summer solstice parade. It's Tabitha uh, and Judith. Roll a single D10 each. Oh wow, <laughs> we're already doing great, guys. Seven. Ten. Cigarette bounces off your shoe, Judith, leaving ash all over it. It's mostly burned out. Came from down the alley behind you. Distracting uh, she, you from the question you were just asked. Uh, she turns and looks affronted. You see Walt, who's paying no attention to you at all. Um, excuse me, watch where you throw your cigarette butts, please. Got a Paul pilot. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, she gets up from her chair, puts a thermos on it, and stomps up to Walt. Hello. He reeks of alcohol. <laughs> oh. Please watch where you throw your cigarette butts. One landed on my shoe. Okay. Great. I was going to make sure you're not planning on driving anywhere, but I don't think I have to worry about that. Why? Have the subterfuge or larceny plus dex. Walt and Judith carry on. Because there's no cars. I'm a so. great driver. Uh, there's no larceny on this sheet, so I'll go with subterfuge. You might be a great driver, but you uh, either spilled your beer or you've been drinking for a while. Or Spill my beer. Spilled your beer. What am I, 12? While you hear this conversation, Tabitha, you're rifling through Judas purse. What's in your purse, Judas? <laughs> or your wallet? Sorry. Uh, it's probably like a little clutch. Uh, it's a nice clutch. Whatever would have been not top tier designer, but nice. Um, and there's like, you know, a wallet, credit cards. Uh, did they carry checkbooks? Yes. In 1996, for sure. Checkbook. Uh, she thinks that this is a safe place. Um, kind of the opposite of my other character, especially in that regard. Uh, uh, a pen, a notepad. There's probably a lot of random notes um, that are raunchier than you would expect to be in this woman's handbag. 
but other than that um just the basics that you would expect someone to have that's left our house for the day Ben, in the middle of the, sorry, Walt, in the middle of the sentence to you, you realize, shit, my break's over because you're not really paying attention to her. Right, so he puts his beer down, takes out his flask. Do you attempt to go back inside? Yeah. Goddamn back. door's locked again. Well, I'm going to go through the front then. Uh, excuse me. I it's think. A narrow alleyway. Do you shoulder bump out of Judith out of the way? Excuse me, toots. Tuts. Oh, no. no, 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 no. I am not tuts. You should know that that's offensive and not acceptable language to be using without express previous permission. You're cute. Are you single? Not in regards to you. Nah, she's with me. Yes, I am with that lovely lady. Cool. Are you sure you should really be going back? Do you work there? Yeah, but I'm kind of like working like a hot dog stand out front for this parade. You're interested oh. in some uh, other kind of dog, though. You should let me know. I don't even know. You can goodbye now. And uh, <laughs> she uh, turns around, stomps back. And uh, moves the thermos off her chair to sit back down. Yuri is walking down the street looking for another official at the same moment that you stomp out of the alley. Uh, Yuri's all like, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, because you're obviously mad. And I'm then sorry, excuse forward me. walking forward while looking at you, smashes straight into uh, Walt, making Walt drop his flask. Uh, also, Tabitha will say to Judy, I'm sorry, I thought that would work. I didn't know it was going to make him even creepier. It's okay. It was it was a good try. <laughs> I quickly go for my flask. No, sorry. Um, I will replace whatever water you had in there. Uh, How about you water. fix my air conditioner in the kitchen? Wait, you're working in the kitchen and drinking like that? I'm I'm worried that you're going to just catch fire as soon as you get close to an open flame. You're just gonna sniff the flask. It smells like water to me. What is it? Is it gin? It's Cuddy Sark. It's Cuddy's. <laughs> Yesterday it was Old Crow. You actually watch some of Yuri's nose hair shrivel. Smells like water to me. All right. Uh, I'd like to point out he's the hollow leg merit. <laughs> Which gives some huge buffs against alcohol. Also, Definitely he has the vice. smells like it came out of a plastic bottle. That's all you really know, Yuri. I have better stuff in the shop. Better water? No, vodka. Now, I don't have a boat, but may I t may I have some business at your shop later? Yeah, sure. I also fix cars. Holds his hand out, Walt. Yuri. It's happening right behind you two. That's totally fine. Judith is going to attempt to ignore that situation. They seem fine. And really, Walt is none of her concern anyway. Uh, so she turns back to uh, Tabitha to attempt to resume whatever conversation they were having. Not that you're worried about interacting with them. It's that right now, everything around you smells like cheap liquor, oil, and BO. Not... A fantastic atmosphere. I'm not finding any inspiration here. You sure? I feel like that's like half the description for the dudes on the covers. And probably like really cheap cologne on one of them. I was going to say one? Like the kind that costs three dollars. What's that new chain you see everywhere now? Wall something? 
I, I think Yuri would have very cheap Russian cologne. Oh, wait. I just found out that Walt has a three appearance. Fuck. <laughs> that will complicate all of this. But continue. <laughs> hey, me too. Good job, Walt. Yeah! <laughs> I have a one charisma vote. Ah, oh, that's fine. Uh, Pamela is a very homely looking woman, but I have poor charisma. Speaking of Pamela, a big, big ass horse comes tearing down the street, dragging bridling behind it that's truly been broken. It's like a Clydesdale. Uh huh. And then, like, two people are sprinting after it. One of them is Pamela. That's definitely interesting. Oh, hey, I'm very good with animals. Perhaps I could help. You say, oh, hey, I'm very good with animals, perhaps. Never mind. <laughs> um, yep, precisely. Is there like... <laughs> so, I'm running down the street, right? Um. Well, actually, she wouldn't have run down the street. She would have been on another horse chasing the horse. Because that's how you catch a horse. Because you're not running after a horse. Well, well the other dumbass is. Okay, well, uh... While the other dumbass took off, Pamela took a moment to grab one of the other horses, hop on it, and take off after the horse. Random NPC stops in front of you for and is like, I should have done that. Would you, do I need to, to roll something? Mm -hmm. Animal can. Sure. Animal can with what? Prisma. Cool. Me. Bye. Where's my dice? Thank you. Three. Four. Six. Seven. Eight. Okay. Six and higher? Correct. One, two, three, four, five successes. Okay. You watch this random person, not the, you watch Pamela catch that horse like a skilled expert, like, like a, what do you call it? Ranch hand, like a cowboy. Cowgirl in this case. Um, she uh, catches the horse, uh, hops over gets on that horse grabs the bridle of the other horse um and comes back around to the person that was also chasing the horse hey kenny should use your brain next time <laughs> you're so funny storms off back the other direction good job catching the pony she like has the bridle to the other horse like held out Okay, you can walk. The smattering of applause, and then the Russian guy says, Good job capturing the pony. He's a Clydesdale, but thank you. Yes, a lovely pony. That was very impressive. Thank you. Hope and she whips out her notebook and starts writing something down. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pamela, you see Walt is there with them. You're not sure if Walt is with them, but you know Walt. Yeah. yeah. Because Walt hits on everyone and is a sleaze bag. Evening, Walt. Pam. So, um, hope you folks will enjoy the parade when it starts. This is our star, references the Clydesdale. Star the Pony. This is a good name for a pony. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, Walt, Walt looks name underneath. Lucky Rodeo Box. All the horses here are named like they're very badly named uh, racehorses on this island. What were you gonna say, um, Ben? Walt looks underneath the horse. Lucky rodeo box is packing heat, yeah. Um, Walt, I wouldn't stick my face down there if I were you. I was trying to see why you like him. I like all horses. 
It doesn't really matter what gender they are. Anyway, you should probably get back to the kitchen before it burns down without you. Or with you. Either way. The horse's tail flicks as Pamela starts walking again while giving you that farewell. Hits your flask and sends it flying to the street. <laughs> he pulls out his other flask. <laughs> <laughs> Were you going to go burn down a kitchen? Again, it's a hot dog stand. Also, I make burgers. At a hot dog? Never mind. Never mind. You don't happen to have any borscht, do you? I don't think beets are in season. Hmm. Eh. But hey, if I get beets, I can make you borscht. An hour passes. Judith and Tabitha, what do you do during that hour? Uh, I will try and... Uh, so when I rifled through Judith's purse, uh, I didn't take anything out. Just sort of like, oh, okay, this is what sort of person she is. Um, so put everything back and then spend like the next hour just trying to befriend Judy. Also go ahead and before you elaborate on that befriending, give, give me another uh, subterfuge plus dexterity check. I've lost all my tabs. Sorry, roll 20 is being weird. Okay. That is another four successes. You have three of Walt's four flasks, including the one that went in the street. <laughs> so that may help you befriend Judith. Yeah, I'll, I'll show off like, oh yeah, when you were uh, telling off that creep, uh, Look what I got from his pockets. Oh god, he's got terrible taste in liquor. I also have no money. A lot of flasks, though. Or at least you did. Where all the money goes. No, all the money goes to my ex-wife. I took the alimony flaw. I have a terrible not-canon thing that Walt is Declan's dad. And we had a really <laughs> shitty one night stand. <laughs> well, tell us about your hot dog stand now that you've had an hour to get ready. So the owner of the place is like, let's make some money on this parade and uh, just fry up some burgers, dogs, whatever's cheap and sell it to people. No, I, I'm not hung over from the night before because he never actually stopped drinking. What's the stand look like, though, with Walt in charge? There's like a plastic table, a little, I don't know, like awning overhead. <laughs> like a deck umbrella that's badly attached to something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's not in charge of the money. Uh, like one of the waitresses or maybe the bartender is. They, pro they would have had a keg outside, but Walt is there, and they know better than to put it <laughs> that close to Walt. Like, clean? Are all the condiments available, or is this like a hot mess? I mean, everything's available. He is very serious about his job. Okay. That's how Yuri. he keeps buying the good juice. Fair. Yuri. Yet nobody lets you help them with the fireworks. They're lost. I could make them make a big, big boom. That's why they won't. They're lost. On the island. <laughs> what do you do when you give up? Well, if I realize they are not allowing me to help, perhaps I will go bother the ponies. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, you can have that scene for a second before the parade begins. 
Um, so Pamela is back at the round pin, um, making sure that what did you name the Clyde Steel? I don't know. I threw out three random words. It's like a very badly worded uh, racehorse. I heard radio something. I'm Lucky sure slapping Jack. Uh, okay. Lucky um, is uh, all put together, replace any <laughs> broken pit bits that got uh, taken out by him breaking free um, as she sees Yuri uh, walk, walk on over. He's a little bit of a limp, by the way. Okay. Oh, uh, hey, Yuri, you know the fireworks aren't over here, right? Oh, yes, I, I, um, they would not let me help. It's probably wise. Last year, you did almost take out the library with one of the fireworks. One of the horse's shoulder bumps your Yuri, carry on. Just like walks up to you and he's like, oh. "It'd like me." Radiohead, yeah, probably. Radiohead. Wait, I, I thought the the pony face was slick. Clydesdale horse. Um. Well, there's like all of your face moves. There's more than one horse, and they all have different names. You know, this is our main transportation on the island, so there's, like, ten horses here, probably about, like, 30 to 40, if not more, on the entire island. Horse bumps you again. You remember there's an apple in your pocket. <laughs> I will pull out the apple and toss it. Fetch! As soon as you pull it out, the apple's gone and your hand almost was. Okay, fine. Uh... The horse doesn't move, though. It stands over top of you, crunching with apple bits splattering onto you. Carry on. Could I help you with something? Did you need something? None of the horses need duct tape. Oh. What about electrical tape? Um. No. Not, not today. Um, you, you could, she, she, uh, picks up her, like, brush kit and, uh, takes out, like, a curry comb. She's like, you could brush him, though, if you wanted to. In circles. Like, yeah. wax on, wax off. Okay, I, don't I will brush the pony. Yet. When did Karate Kid come out? Uh, before 1996, you're safe. Okay. I will brush pony. He will. He grabs the brush and just starts doing. Can you do it properly. He's gonna try. Okay. Wax on, wax off. Isn't that hard? The horse ripples its skin for you. That means you're doing a good job. Oh. Um, girl horses have nipples. Why are you asking that? Uh. You stop for a second to let your wrist break, and it stomps the ground real hard. Stop being impatient. She, like, scolds it. Sticks its tongue out at you. Good pony. Um. So, what was Walt up today? When you say Walt, the horse poops. Eh. Normal vault things. Was he harassing that writer? She's a writer, right? I've seen her a couple of summers. I don't know. I don't fix books, I fix cars. I... And the occasional horse. Uh huh. That was one time, Yuri. You can't put it on your resume. <laughs> Experience is experience. <sighs> so, are you bored because they won't let you play with gunpowder? Pretty much. 
Also, knee is acting up just a little bit. What happened to your knee? Is this kind of far away look? Uh, yes, my knee. Anyway, I think I will go get the hot dog. I, you know, I mean, I give him a lot of shit, but he actually is a good cook. You should tell him to do one bacon wrapped for you. Those are really good. He made that for me special once or twice. He might. Pretty he good. said he would make some borscht at some point. Mm -hmm. Oh, enjoy the ponies. He'll hand the brush back. Sure. I, I will. Uh, keep safe. Don't walk in the street. Um, they will run you over. Yeah, it's not like that one time I was run over by a truck. Uh, that's why we remember to put the emergency brakes on. Oh no, it had nothing to do with emergency brake. I was run over by a truck. On purpose? Me. Eh. Okay. Well, um, I hope that doesn't happen to you again. Um, and, uh, go, go enjoy a hot dog. I will. You know, one time I tried a hot dog made out of horse. Um, other time I will tell you about the truck. Bye. Bye. Now you're back at the hot dog stand, Yuri. Apparently the camera's following you. Hello. Hello, comrade. Hmm. Are you insinuating something? That we're comrades. This is true. We are friends. And it is 1996. So you know... Other woman with glasses. You both glance over and you see Tabitha watching as like Judith is getting swarmed by like four people looking for autographs that are tourists to the island that actually recognize her. You don't see Tabitha, you know, trying to grab wallets. Tabitha, you've collected three credit cards and like five hundred dollars in cash for these autographers. Uh, Walt ignores your question. <laughs> yes, I'd like to. Perhaps maybe not um, hitting on woman so weirdly. No, no, that's the move. First, I start off as rough, and then later on, I apologize and act sensitive. But that usually causes them to melt. Make they can think I've got layers to me. You know, like a cake. Women love cakes. You smell more like onion, but okay. <laughs> well, those are frying here for some of the sausages. Chicago folks put, do sausage and onion? That's weird. Idea. You grab one of the sausage and you show her your sausage. Perhaps she will like your cooking. Listen, I can't just show her the sausage. Like, I gotta, you can't just start with that. You gotta, you know, make them, I don't know, some sort of Italian dish, maybe. Women think that's romantic. You fly them with some wine and you put them in bed and you go home. But you Two nights later, sausage. you take your reward. Consensually, of course. I think perhaps we have miscommunication. Am I speaking the proper English? Well, yeah, I mean, more English than Russian, yeah. So, you don't think that lovely woman would want your sausage? You mean hot dog? Or are you making a euphemism? Hot dog. Oh, I thought you were meaning... Uh... What did you think that 
Time meant. A customer shows up to avoid Walt having to answer that. Hey, what do you want? Bratwurst. All right. Pay the lady. Okay. What do you want on it? The works. Three minutes later comes back complaining about something you added as part of the works. That's part of it. This conversation spirals for like three minutes. It becomes a shouting match. <laughs> like, I feel like a cop comes by and you're like, it's not worth it to, to the tourist. Just walk away. Yuri, do you do anything about this or just watch amusedly? Look, you order the works. We give you the works. That makes the tourist go away. I help you out, Walt. And I'll help you out. What do you want? Obviously, a hot dog. Oh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. You want the works? You want two in one bun? You want a sweet wiener? I think I will take a hot dog with works. All right, not the sweet wiener, though. It's got some chocolate syrup on it. It's good. Okay. Yeah, the, the Wisconsinites go crazy for it, but they get cheese, too. Yeah, like cheddar blasters yeah. in the middle. That sounds pretty good. All right. Get the hot dog and I will describe it like this. Not boring. <laughs> the parade begins. Yuri is shoving this giant loaded hot dog in his mouth watching the parade go by. No, you could probably like you could have ended the sentence with shoving this giant load in my mouth. It's fine. <laughs> Only if there was trying some to kill me. <laughs> it's up to you whether Yuri enjoys it or not. It's not boring. I'm pretty sure his taste buds are completely killed off by the fact of homemade vodka in the car shop. Probably, and every now and then you take an accidental swig of actual oil. Um, your beer keg looks a lot like the used oil barrel. <laughs> so, the parade begins, and it's fairly entertaining. It's music and floats and dancing high schoolers. Very, very loud drums. Parading horses. Y'all pretty entertained. It lasts about an hour. The scene moves to when the tail end of the parade is moving past, but nobody's left yet because, you know, there's more to the show afterwards. The street's a mess. Now you're in a huge crowd of jostling, sweaty people. It smells a lot like hot dogs and onions and cheap hamburgers. Judith has been asked for autographs a lot. <laughs> Sorry, do I need to start sending this to the main group? <laughs> I've been sending them. <laughs> Team belongs to all of you except Pam, who's off with horses. I think Rosie's broken right now. <laughs> I'm crying. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm I'm surprised that people recognize Judith, to be honest, because they would know her by her pen name as M Pierce. So they probably greet her as such, which might confuse other individuals. <laughs> Much like Richard Bachman, people have figured out who you are and where you live. 
Also, you know, there's that one novel where your actual picture is on the dust jacket of like 200 of the copies. I you should... wrote books in the 80s. Things were sloppy. Yeah. Uh, she still gives, sorry, I'm laughing at the, I, I will still give, uh, I give autographs, I am uh, friendly, uh, if they ask what's happening to the main protagonist of the previous book, I let them know that she is going to be reappearing, uh, possibly with a new love interest, maybe on a ranch somewhere. Tabitha, uh, Yuri Waltz. I'm just trying to convince drunk people to buy ketchup on a bun. It's worked a few times. Um, you uh, are... <laughs> go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, I should specify a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> Yuri goes up to Judith. You are famous writer? Famous, no. Uh, recognizable in certain circles. Yes. Yeah. Circles? Why circles? Why not squares? I think because people tend to gather in circles rather than squares. Mm. There was that one time. Back at home, we all gathered in the square. Then there were only a few. Mysterious. Can you tell me more? Nope. Intriguing. She stares at you. <laughs> I don't have an adjective. She stares at you consideringly. Uh, and here you will limp off back to the hot dog cart. <laughs> Takes out notebook scribbles some more. Uh, I would like to try helping Walt upsell ketchup in a hot dog bun, uh, for a cut of the profits. Walt, do you agree? Well, I mean, it's kind of off the books already. The waitress and I are just like splitting the cash right now we're selling them for like five bucks how much do you think there's not a lot of over, there's not a lot of wiggle room here you gotta you gotta sell a lot of them watered down beer can we do that they're not gonna do you, know do you let tabitha help you pull scams from your hot dog cart i don't see why not you run out of beer and buns in like an hour Oh shit. No. Done. <laughs> <laughs> and you're actually getting low on ketchup. Well done. Good and that's when things. you hear a little kid say, Spot, come back, Spot. A little kid runs out into the street that looks amazingly like Steve would probably look if he was seven. The parade's over, but you know, it's Wait. still a street. Steve's character or Steve himself? You heard me. Steve in Blue or Voodoo Arcade? Because Steve in Blue would have been a child at this time. Voodoo Arcade would have been too. Hey. Hey, Ambrose, unrelated. Uh, we need baby pictures of Steve now. Thank you. I will have to con him into sending me some. <laughs> I have seen them. They exist. And they're adorable. It's a very pale, blue-eyed, blonde-haired kid. Very blonde. Pale. His hair is, like, translucent. 
Thanks for the great Masters of Rem. This one's for you. Perception checks. Plus alert. What's the difficulty? Six. I think. Mm -hmm. And mine is eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you said three. Perception plus alertness. Thank you. You said difficulty is three? Six. Six. One oh, Always six, six unless I tell you otherwise. Uh, in the in the nineties, tens were one success. Same rule for the game. For okay. Me. Four successes and four dice. Uh, Judith and Yuri. In case I missed yours, what'd you get? Four for Yuri. Oh. So you see an animal darts across the street, Tabitha, and there's something wrong with it. Uh, Judith and Walt, you lock, you lock eyes for a long, lingering moment. Uh, Pamela and Yuri, there's something wrong with that not dog. It's like, if you could take a cat with the floof of a fluffy dog and stick it on like a turtle's body without the shell, that's what that looks like. I have concerns. Did that look like mutant animal to you? A little. He could have also put a costume on like something. It is Roger's kid, so who knows? I'm not so sure. Then go catch it. What if it is radioactive? She rolls her eyes and she stomps after uh, where Spot was running. You stomp into the street just in time to hear some scattered shouts and then a very loud scraping noise and a really loud wham thud that actually shakes the street a little and then somebody screams from the alley across the street. I hope it's my ex-wife. <laughs> um... Uh, do I see what just happened? Nope, it's an alley. Where's Spot? That's the alley Spot went down. Okay, I'm gonna continue. What about uh, Tabitha, Yuri, Walter, Judith? You're just gonna look and go, huh, and carry on, or you're gonna go investigate? I will now, follow. For and now, it's just, you, you don't have to investigate because your characters are not adventurers yet. You're on mute. Air she muted, also. We can hear you now. To whom are you speaking? Rachel. Ah. Oh, okay. All we heard was she also. Ah. Uh, well, so Tabitha's a con artist, but uh, she also grew up in that culture where, like, you help other people if they need it. So she's going to run towards the screen. Okay. Has Judith noticed anything? You said that she locked eyes with Walt. Has she noticed what else is happening? You heard the noise. before Until the noise, though, no. Uh, when she hears the noise, she stops fiddling with her necklace and glasses and stops looking walled up and down uh, and uh, turns towards the alley to at least look. What about Yuri and Walt? Uh, I, or Walt, Yuri stood up. Yeah, Yuri said he was going to follow Pamela. I mean, this ain't my business. I'm working. You said you're working, but it sounded like you said you're allergic to danger. Yeah. On brand. So, Tabitha, Yuri, and Pamela go to cross the street. Judith goes to see what's happening, but isn't crossing the street. Walt doesn't give a shit. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'm going to need Yuri, Pamela, and Tabitha to make dodge rolls. Well, Dex plus dodge. Or athletics. Okay. Oh, this is going to suck. Yeah, five. 
one. And uh, Yuri had to step away for a moment. I'll let you take turns. You roll this one, Pam. You roll the next one, Tabitha, for Yuri. I don't know what his sheet is. Let's roll six dice. We'll average it till he gets back. Six? I only rolled two dice. Three and three if it was average. Oh, I thought you meant like six total. One success. Okay. Who got more than one? Was it Pamela or Tabitha? Tabitha got more than one. Tabitha, your instincts for being a street uh, person who spends a lot of time on the mean streets of big cities serves you well. You get the hell out of the way when the dumpster comes flying out of the alley, clips Yuri and Pamela, knocking them spinning to the ground, uh, three bashing each, and smashes into the wall across the street, flattening a tourist and smashing Walt's cart, sending condiments flying everywhere. The tourist is very dead. There's more screams from the alley, cut short with tearing noises, and then a roar. Well, that's a different type of pounding than I'm used to. The kid stops running across the street, mutters, screw this under his breath, and takes off. Ma'am. <laughs> I will show up to your house. <laughs> and what? I don't know. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> We're going to drink wine on your porch. <laughs> that sounds fine. <laughs> um, Mr. Storyteller, how do you mark, like bashing on on the character sheet should be able to click it three times to get different marks should be probably like, usually it's a dash and then an x and then star yeah clicking. it's the dash okay and i do three levels of that so i'm yep. up to wounded with Correct. bashing okay thank you at this point i'm, I'm stalling so he can put his ears back in you just hear Walt shout, son of a bitch, smashes a beer bottle and heads towards the alley. <laughs> yeah, with his broken hey. bottle knife. Okay, you are clear. You tried to cross the street, Yuri, got hit by a flying dumpster that killed a pedestrian, and now something's roaring in the alley. Uh, we both took three bashing. Well, that's fun. Mm -hmm. Don't you get to soak bashing in this edition? Uh, No. Mortals don't so well not without armor. I thought it was lethal we couldn't soak without armor. Uh I'm giving you bashing because I'm kind, but you can't soak flying dumpster. That's fair. <laughs> you can't I was soak trying to help flying the dumpster. Uh Wow. At this point, everyone roll a single D ten and add your decks and wits. You know what time it is. Ten ten eleven, yeah. Uh decks and wits. Two. And then throw your results in the Discord. Math. In the Discord? Yep. Okay. Eight, nine, ten, ten, ten. I rolled a two. <laughs> Racking him up one second. Uh, Tabitha and uh, Judith, and what are your dexterities? Two for Judith. Three, all right. having fun with the music. Yep. 
Okay. In reverse order. Walt, what are you going to do when it's your turn? I mean, he was already heading into the alley with the broken bottle. Moving stab. Got it. Uh, Yuri. Can I say that I, like, pulled a tire iron out of seemingly nowhere? Ooh, sure. Just for flavor text? Yeah. And go after whatever is making weird noises. Pamela. Um, I would like to um, find cover and observe what the fuck just threw a dumpster. Okay. Judith. Uh, Judith finally gets up from her chair and <laughs> um, uh, starts moving across the alley because there's something interesting happening. You always need a, prote a, uh, a villain of some sort. And Tabitha. Uh, so can Tabitha see what threw the dumpster? Not yet, but it'll go first, and then you'll see. Uh, all right, fuck it. It threw a dumpster. I have two dots of firearms. Uh, is it reasonable to assume that I have, like, a concealed carry handgun in my purse? Yes. All right, bang, bang. Okay. Right. With a massive roar, two halves of a person who was in the alley come flying out and land in the street next to the three of you that are in the street. And this thing come storming out of the alley that doesn't look like Spot anymore. It's about eight feet tall. It kind of looks like a Gorn from Star Trek with fur and four arms. A lot of screaming ensues in chaos. People are sprinting everywhere. Stuff's getting knocked over. You're all trying to take your actions while the crowd is jostling you, maybe stepping on you, getting in the way of a line of fire. What could go wrong? Tabitha. Take your shot at difficulty eight. I'm going to spend a willpower. Okay. Uh, two successes plus the willpower makes it three. You managed to take your shot at the right moment and not hit any bystanders. You do hit the monster. Uh, so two successes beyond what was needed is two damage plus uh, this is like a pocket revolver, right? Like a thirty-eight. Yeah, like a revolver. Okay, four lethal damage hits the monster. It bleeds some kind of black sticky ichor. Now it's looking at you. Uh, Judith, you've investigated. Uh... Make an athletics check plus dexterity. I have no athletics, so it's just straight dex. Me too. Nothing. Uh, go ahead and roll stamina, difficulty five. As you get trampled. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Your glasses and your left arm are broken. Take one lethal. Not the glasses. You get knocked down and trampled. Okay. Pamela. Yes. Go ahead and roll wits plus uh, streetwise. Okay. Or if you don't have streetwise, survival. One, two, three, four successes. 
you successfully find a place to take cover, which means when you roll to avoid being trampled, you can roll uh, dex plus athletics plus three extra dice. Okay, dex plus athletics plus three extra dice? Mm-hmm. Okay. Two successes. I rolled a lot of ones. Okay. That's enough to avoid being trampled. Uh, for anyone unfamiliar with the sheet, when you click a damage box, the first thing you see is a slash. If you click it again, you get an X. If you click it again, you get a star. If you click it again, it clears it. Slash is bashing. X is lethal. Star is aggravate. This character sheet has to drop down, so you just select the oh, icon. Okay. Even better. So whatever your highest undamaged health level is is whatever you get next. If you have both bashing and lethal, you just keep going down till you hit the bottom, and then the ones at the top get worse. When you fill with lethal, then you die and go unconscious. And lethal is the X. Yeah. So to be clear, my bruised should have an X. No, your bruised should have a slash. Your broken arm should have an X. You should have three bruised slashes a and health one box. X. What? Oh. I'm now. I thought she was talking about the bruising damage they took from the... <laughs> it's Why? not divided into body parts. I know there are some systems that do that, but... Have you taken any damage yet? This is the first time? Then yes, your first health box should be an X. Thank you. I understand mm -hmm. now. Yuri. You're going to stab it. Stab? That was me. No, smash, yes. Yeah, so I got the roll athletic splits decks to cross the street without getting trampled. So sorry that the whole sentence ran together for me. Um, that was athletics plus decks. Well, okay. you can use strength. Athletics plus strength to muscle through the crowd and not get trampled. Uh, what's the threshold for that? Six. Six. Okay. One, two, two successes. It's not terrible. You successfully cross the street. You may now do brawl plus strength to hit it. So I got four successes with that 10 in there, but I also rolled a one. Okay. Same rules you would have in mage for me since this is classic. Tens count as two and eliminate ones. Okay, cool. As so opposed to successes. new hunter rules. Uh, so, you hit it. You know, like when you hit a petrified tree with a bat? It's like that. Quang! It hurts your wrist more than the Gorn monster. Oh man, that makes the old knee injury act up too. Damn. Yeah, probably. You hear a bunch of explicative, expli uh, you hear a bunch of bad words in Russian. Expletives. Walt. Dex or strength plus athletics to cross the street. Right, with Dex. I don't know how to do that, so I'm still rolling. Uh, forward slash. Roll. I do a question mark? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> and they got 10 cancels them out. <laughs> that many, huh? <laughs> Three ones. And Benjamin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's my I kind of my house rules. All right. So, how many? What did you get Ooh. if those are canceled? Uh, two successes. You successfully crossed the street. Barely. <laughs> because my death actually, specialty does not apply to crossing a street. A guy actually hits you, but he like body checks you, which causes you to accidentally vault over the other guy that would have stepped on your face. You land on your feet. <laughs> you may now try to stab the monster, which is going to be melee plus strength. It's one-handed weapon, so it should be dex, though. I'll allow it. Uh, 
Uh, does my specialty surgeon's hands apply? Sure. How the fuck do you have surgeon's hands? Because I have a four dexterity, and he's very good with a knife. Mm. And his fingers. Yeah, uh-huh. he's very good okay. with those fingers. Nope. Uh, what does what was what it? The tens explode with the specialty. Two. What? Tens count for two. Cool. Oh, you mean with the specialty? Uh, with the specialty, since we're already doing tens count as two, it lowers your DC by one. Okay, so what would five? It? One. Uh, three, five successes. All right, you. <laughs> Five successes. You go right for the soft spot under the armpit, and your calculations are perfect. You hit it, and the glass pushes on its skin and shatters as it goes. Doesn't actually make it bleed. And now you're holding a really tiny piece of broken glass. Uh oh. <laughs> it in slow motion, swipes at all three, well, two, I guess, of Yuri and Walt while it locks eyes with Tabitha and is like, get out of my way, I'm going for the one that shot me. And in that moment, as time slows down, uh, you all hear a voice in your head, very deep, but yet very soothing at the same time, saying, unclean. I mean, I, I know Walt's unclean, but I don't. I get sweaty working in a hot kitchen over a hot stove. Okay? Yuri's going to smell his armpit, you know, working in the mechanic shop. You know. What do you all do? You don't have to go in order. It's actually better if you do, because then we control the talking. So, yes, what do you do, uh, Tabitha, when you hear that in your head? Me and I have a gun, so bang bang again. Uh, Walt, when you hear the voice in your head, I'm going to take a swig and spit the alcohol into its eyes. Uh, Judith, what are you gonna do when you hear the voice in your head? Uh, assume I, I sort of imagine an, an anime esque moment where she grabs her glasses, puts them on her face, and they're somehow like repaired because I didn't take the a flaw for her being like blind or anything uh just reading glasses yeah (laughs) but she needs them for her fans that mousy librarian look works for some people and she um grabs her thermos and holds it like a club and uh gets ready for whatever's gonna come to that alley (laughs) Because I don't think she's made it past the street. Okay. Um, Pam, you hear the voice in your head. What are you going to do about it? I've seen what this creature can do in that Yuri's crowbar and Walt's beer bottle ain't doing shit. Um... So, is Spot's owner still around? The little kid. No, that kid said fuck this and ran away when it threw the dumpster. Probably smart. Um, I, I'm I'm going to follow the child's lead because I have a child of my own at home, and um, yeah, I kind of want to go home alive. Yuri. Well, I mean, so this thing's kind of a danger to everybody, and... They already killed one person. Exactly. Yuri... didn't come all the way from Russia. What? Survive it. What? What? <laughs> to survive... Russia, Texas. Exactly. Okay. For, yeah. for to, to survive the shithole that is Russia... Just to die by this thing. I am from Odessa, Texas. <laughs> Moscow, Maryland. Um... Yes. <laughs> that got a good chuckle out of Rosie. Um... There is a Moscow, Pennsylvania. 
It's also in Edgewood Forest, Pennsylvania, Judith. That's it. He's from Moscow. Moscow, Pennsylvania. You're gonna, you're gonna keep going after the monster. He he is. He's uh he he earned his right to be here. Um. He's gonna he's gonna try and maintain that right to be here. Still in slow motion, so your actions haven't actually finished taking place yet. Do I have firearms? No. I do have firearms. I have two no. dots and firearms. Still in slow motion before any of your actions take place. Alone, you will not survive. You cannot escape. You will not win. But fear not, for I am with you. And your reaction to that in your heads, like, you know, mental reaction, not physical. Yuri wonders if he had a bad batch of vodka. It's saying it in Russian to Yuri. Yuri wonders if he Wallace. had a bad batch of vodka. <laughs> but then he figures maybe it's his ancestors. Don't look at me like that, Ben. Okay, so Anybody my else? Russian character had ancestors five and also heard his ancestors all the time. Anybody else react in your heads? And get out of my head. Uh, Tabitha just thinks, all right, then get out of my way and let me help. Judith just stalks forward. I gotta look cool in front of the babes. I can't stop now. No, no, I only mean when you react in your head, not physically. No, that's what he says to the, to the voices. Oh. <laughs> Glorious. Uh, and then it uses each of your full names. And as it does, you start seeing like flashes of your life up to this point, highlighting everyone you care about. Your whole existence has led you to this moment in this place in this time. Will you not protect others the way you would protect these? Especially does that to Pamela showing the kid. The child will also be in danger if you do not act. Also, FYI, out of character, if you deny the heralds, you don't become a hunter. Maybe that's how Pamela dies so quickly, because she doesn't accept the fucking heralds. Oh, you'd just be a bystander. Why are there all these flashes of old white dudes in like the thirties? <laughs> Jack Daniels, Johnny Walker. <laughs> yeah, I got that. It was for Ambrose. Fine. It's actually waiting for an answer because that time it asked a question. For all of you. Yuri Except gives a Pamela, mental thumbs up. very angrily says, fine. Uh, well, yes. And she's totally just picking something up from the horse area. And I don't horse. think it's uh, weak to horse pies. Sorry. Um, yes. But there are sharp instruments that are used in horse grooming kits. Not me, obviously. I'm a very dull tool. Waiting on the rest of you. Time remains frozen until sure. you answer. I'm not going anywhere. Big Tabitha just repeats the same thought. Help her get out of the way. Waiting on Yuri. I thought I answered. He's he he thinks it's an ancestor, and he's like gives a mental thumbs up. Mental thumbs up. Okay. He's not a man of many words. The power belongs to you now. We merely bestow it. We do not. Word I'm looking for is the GM here. We do not lead. We merely guide. This world is yours. Take it back. And we'll start in the initiative order with with uh, Tabitha. What was your creed? Uh, my creed is Redeemer. Yes, Which? Redeemer. Sorry, Redeemer. 
Okay. And what are your powers? Your edges? Bluster, insinuate, and foresee. Uh, after the voice says that, it fades from your mind, but you're able to see exactly what's going to happen for the next minute or so. Like, you can see it playing out as if it was actually happening. Diverting into several different variations depending on what you do. Making your difficulty four for all actions until the scene ends. For all rolls. Judith, what was your creed? Visionary. Powers, your edges. Uh, 4C, pinpoint, delve, and rejuvenate. Okay. You feel a rush of power fill you. And you and everyone around you, which is now everyone in the group, looks down to see you emanating with light as your wounds heal in front of everyone's eyes. You have no damage. That's lucky. Pamela, what is your creed and edges? Uh, my creed is judgment. Um, and my edges is uh, judge slash discern, burden, balance. And do we want to talk about the extra special edge that you gave us all? Yeah, we can save those for later. Okay. Okay. Uh, you look at it as you wrench free something you can use as a weapon. You can decide what that is yourself. A piece of metal and wood from the various floats that had the horses attached to them. A uh, hot hot dog stand metal. Uh, no, I'm grabbing um, one of like the hefty pair of um, like hoof pliers from the farrier kit. That's what Pamela's grabbing. You notice that you now I have a lot of arms, but it's seriously unbalanced. Its knees are a weak spot. You don't know how you know this, but you're absolutely sure. Its kneecaps are going to disappear. It's fine. Yuri, what's your creed and what are your edges? Creed is vengeance. Edges are cleave, trail, smoke bomb, and ward. Okay. Uh, everyone watches as they look up from Judith and look over at Yuri and see that the crowbar you were carrying glows red hot and like actually starts dripping, burning, melting metal off the edge of it and elongates about three inches. It's not burning your hand, though. I don't know. Judith's going to write about that. Damn it, I'm going to need new one of these. And last, and last but not least, Walt, three edges. Uh, he is a defender with ward, rejuvenate, and demand. Okay. Um, for Walt, as time slowly resumes and the monster slashes down onto... Yuri and Walt. Uh, what's Walt's favorite TV show? It's sci-fi. In the 90s? Yeah, or the 80s if you never caught up. Babylon 5. I'm not going to say Babylon 5. He doesn't watch Babylon 5. <laughs> the original oh. Battlestar Galactica? He's caught that X-Men cartoon a few times while drunk. Okay. Uh, you actually roll yourself in front of Yuri, and your skin does the Colossus thing, and its claws just bounce off you. It's and now that you're imbued, that is where we pause for our mission. I haven't break. seen Farscape, though. Don't go anywhere, audience. We'll be back in about 10 minutes.
Thank you.
And we have returned from break. The heralds have called you to you, and you have answered the call. You are now hunters. However, uh, in this reckoning, the power that you were given that I specifically told you only lasts for this combat. But you have access to all of your edges now. Just remember that if you use them in this fight to describe them as going, holy shit, I can do that. Because you don't know what they are yet. But they just happen. So, once again, in reverse order, Walt, what are you going to do with your action? Grab a brick and hit this bitch with it. Yuri. What are you going to do with your action? Yuri. Yuri Yeltsin. Yuri, what? Yeltsin, it's 1996. His last name is Glasov. Oh. <laughs> uh, Yuri is going to use this now completely ruined crowbar to slicey bash okay. this thing. Pamela. So you said the special one we can only use during this combat. Right. But you still can use all your regular edges, too. You just have to describe it as suddenly realizing you do the thing, not intentionally doing it. Okay. Um... And the special one I'm referring to is, in your case, uh, knowing its weak spots, not the super edge. Oh, I thought you were referring to the super edge. The super edge. edge works the way it's described previously, where it can be used once during the flashback. Okay. Uh, God, this book is hot garbage. Uh, I'm just gonna sit here watching Ben play the the drums. Um. So I know it's weakness. I'm going to go uh, with my horse snippers. I'm going to go for its fucking kneecaps. The back of the knee. I think we specified the back of the knee. <laughs> Gaps open over each other. Okay. And, uh, Judith. All right. Uh, has she actually made it to the alley yet? Yes. Well, the monster's in the street now. You are where you need to be to attack if that's your plan. Perfect. Um... I don't think she has anything that's would assist her in a physical attack but uh i think she can try to see what's coming and at least prepare for that so okay. let's take a look uh not yet i'm just collecting actions first but you can pre-roll it and you want me to the, if, you, if you all want to pre-roll you can just give me numbers when we get there yeah It now has the gift of foresight. Um, would it be possible to sort of focus on that for my turn and just sort of like spot everyone else? Yes. Okay. I will do that then. Okay. <laughs> as you all close, as you all close on the creature, something strange happens. You suddenly see it covered in symbols. Specifically, those in the Discord. Just like all over its body like tattoos. You realize though only you can see them and maybe some of the people around you. You immediately just know, which is very strange, that the top mark means corruption. And the second mark means monster. Interesting. 
It attempts to attack. Whoa. Those ones took it from five successes to three, which is not enough to break your protection shield. All right, Tabitha. Uh, you can go ahead and roll. Oh, uh, do you have awareness? I have one dot. Awareness plus wits. However many successes you get, you can distribute how you wish to any of your fellow players. Each success is minus one to DCs for their encounter. Can I spend a willpower on this? Yep. I'm gonna do that. Ah, oh, fuck. That's a botch. <laughs> Sorry, okay. guys. I'm not used to this power yet. Uh, the willpower lets you salvage what you're doing, but you'll have to continue next round. The, si the sigils distracted you and you lost what you were seeing. Okay. Judith. Do your thing. What, what is my thing? No, oh, Judith. You're Pamela. I am Judith. Oh. <laughs> you are Pamela. No. Names are <laughs> are a construct, anyway. Names are just oh, ideas. That is, um, can she and if necessary, use, spend your fuel. Can she use um, pinpoint? Uh, visionaries understand that knowledge is power, and this allows the visionary to find weakness and vulnerabilities of the monster. Or failing that, the limitations of their supernatural abilities. Yes. Roll it. Yes. Okay. So that's her visionary or her edge plus what? Uh, it'll have to it'll be in the book. It's different for all of them because this is classic and nothing was universal. Yeah, I tried to find it in the book, and uh, even though I wrote down the page numbers, I'm having some problems. Uh, try page 155. Maybe I passed it. Yeah, it, it divides the powers by creed and then divides them by category. So it's it's a little difficult to navigate. Oh, I see. Kind of work. Okay, I'm getting lost in the triggers. What's the page number? It should be uh, 156. Now which one are you using? Pinpoint. Perception plus vision, difficulty six. Thank you. I rolled two platypi and an eight. So five that... successes. Yeah. Uh, your head turns down the street and you see someone standing there, not down the street, but back towards the alley. And you see someone standing there dusting themselves off, just watching what's happening. Someone you don't think you should be able to see, but it's like you can suddenly see around a corner and through darkness. Lock size with you for a second. Second. Hold on a moment. 
here somewhere. And you see this in the Discord appear on its forehead. And you're looking at it and you're like, what? And your mind just tells you that means warlock. All right, Pamela. Um, I actually would like to try. Well, okay, I know. I said I was going for the kneecaps. That's because I didn't read my edges because I couldn't find them in the goddamn book. You just have willpower to change your action. Yes. I'm going to use that. I'm going to willpower okay. and change my action to use balance against the creature. The judge can deny an entity access to its source of strength. Uh, to use this edge, your character must look at the creature and verbally curse it in some fashion, and the creature cannot use any ability or power that requires supernatural energy. Okay. Give us the fluff for the curse and then roll it. <laughs> um... Curse you, you, you demon? <laughs> um, no. It can be. <laughs> um, Goji Hunter in the canon, Crusader, whatever the number was for his internet handle, was not very creative with his curses either. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you goddamn abomination. You don't belong here. Call it a chicken shit. <laughs> you fucking chicken shit. Roll it. Whatever it says under system. Uh, whatever it says under system? Mm, what page is it on? I'm not... I had to Google it. I could not find it in the book. I am on the White Wolf Wiki page. What's the name of the power? Balance. And your creed is... Uh, judgment. Uh, page 162 of the PDF. Like the actual... Plus zeal. How do I know how much zeal I have? You have dots in it. On your sheet. Or it should. Ah. Uh. Yep. In roll 20. What's your highest level zeal power? Three... That would be three dots. Okay. Because I difficulty mean, is balance is a level is a three point power, so I'm assuming that's three. Uh, the difficulty is eight. <laughs> yeah. Difficulty is stamina plus two, and his stamina is ridiculously high. One success. High. I rolled a lot of sevens, but I only rolled one eight. Okay. You managed to successfully activate the power for one hour. <laughs> okay. Yuri, do your thing. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you know where your power is in the book? I have found it. PDF okay. is cooperating with me so far. Cleave. And that is Dex plus Brawl or Melee. And it inflicts an additional plus two damage. All damage is also lethal, no matter what is normally appropriate to the item used. Yep. Okay. So that was Dex plus Brawl or Melee.
Well, that's about the same for either anyway. One, two, three, four question mark. It was um difficulty of what to hit? Six. Oh, okay. Yeah, four. Uh, four successes to hit. So that was strength plus two of damage. Would be six total damage. If that I'm is calculating correct. that. Okay. Whew. How do you swing the crowbar? Uh, like you're breaking someone's kneecaps. You just whack. Okay. You batter up right in the belly because you don't know its kneecaps are a weak spot yet. And you hit it so hard it goes flying back into the alley, shrinking as it goes. Where it hits the ground and bounces into the corner. Because you cut it off from its source of power. Walt, you still have an action. Yeah, I'm hitting it with a brick. You're going to chase it down the alley? Yep, and I'm using the demand power to deal one bashing to myself to increase uh, the damage I do. Okay, chase it and roll it. Thanks for the raid, Lord and Lady of the Fate. What's my difficulty? Six. Five. You chase it down the alley. And you hit it dead on. Killing the poor innocent, tiny looking, mutated rabbit? You don't know. I'm gonna make soup out of you. And you whirl around seeing this other fellow in the alley that Judith's power pinged on. And you also see the sigil across its head. And you try to follow through. You have a muscle spasm and drop your weapon. Then you trip and fall. He steps over you and disappears. That was weird. The rest of you watch a guy step out of the alley and you all see a sigil on his head. That means warlock to all of you. Looks at all of you. You all scramble to your feet to brace yourselves or whatever and then trip over each other and fall in a big pile. He disappears into the crowd. Chaos still ensues. It's only you know the thing is gone. It's quieting down, though, because the street is clearing of people. And not many left. However, you do hear police sirens. The five Aye. of you look at each other, and you all recognize the sigil. Another sigil that is on each of you, visible to each of the other of you. Uh, this one. Which you know means ally slash imbued. You don't see that on anyone else in the street. Do we see any other symbols or just, well, actually, my not perception in your sucks, immediate so. Not in your immediate vicinity, no. I think perhaps it's time to go back to mechanic shop. I don't really feel like being interrogated by police. Uh, I can meet you there. I, I need to go check on the horses. Feel free to bring ponies by the shop. Um, they have their own stables, Yuri. I don't think your mechanic shop is exactly the best place. Every good horse needs its joints oiled. With, like, fish oil supplements, not 
motor oil. Just because it's called horsepower doesn't mean it's anything like an actual horse. <laughs> really? I had no idea. Listen, I'm going to go oil my joints. If anyone wants to join me tonight, I'll buy you all around. Sure. I work here. Yes, you do. Yes, so the sausage man. Up at? Now that there's two possibilities. Yeah, are we meeting up at Yuri's shop or at Walt's uh, place of employment? Um, Pamela's probably going to be busy for the next long while getting things put back in order. Um, so she's not actually going to have time to stop by Yuri's shop, so she's just going to go to Walt's uh, diner thing, restaurant. Roadhouse? Roadhouse. Street saloon? Street I will corner. come by I will come by Roadhead later. <laughs> I hope we all do. No. Is that an unspoken agreement? Is Tabitha and Judith going to go to the bar later? I'm looking for a group consensus. Yes. Yeah. We'll meet up at the bar. Uh, and Judith sort of splits off from the group with Tabitha because they were talking before and she wants to, I don't know, she's a polite human being that is trying to put whatever happened sort of at the back of her brain and move on with what she was doing. It's like, oh, that happened, but I'm going to lie. You can't. You try. You can't. Wait. This is fine. You, you understand fundamentally you have been forever changed. Yeah, her protagonist is going to be... Uh... Yeah, okay. Uh, they're going to have a monstrously good time now. Yuri. Uh, Tabitha, oh, ahead, Tabitha, sorry. Tabitha will offer to buy Judith a drink just so they can sort of like unload, decompress, process what the fuck just happened. Sounds good. Yuri, when you get back to your shop, you see that over the front door. But you're the only one who went, so only you see it. Your brain tells you that means safe haven. You all Who's meet been up at putting the roadhouse. The graffiti? You all meet up at the roadhouse at 10 p.m. There are no sigils there. Were any of my horses hurt? Nope. Okay. Oh, hurt a horse? <laughs> no. I mean, if you want to sleep on the couch, the you could have. Heroes of the story are the Clydesdales. How it is. Uh, 10 p.m. Uh, rolls around. You arrive at the bar. Judith and Tabitha are already there. So is Walt. What were you going to say, uh, Pamela? Um, Pamela will. Uh, I'm assuming. Uh, and you can correct my assumption that Tabitha and Judith are sitting at the bar, or have you guys commandeered a booth? I think we oppose. Okay. Um, Pamela uh, catches uh, Tabitha and Judith uh, and goes uh, up to the bar, yells through the kitchen window, just make my usual, um, and walks over to the booth. Who the fuck was that? <laughs> Bartender says, it's Pamela Walt, geez. Ah. And I'll leave it up to Ben what Pamela's usual would be, and I'm gonna regret this, but here we go. Well... Walt's the cook. This <laughs> the bartender who's making your drink. Oh no, she wants food. Oh, you're doing an order for food. Yeah. 
You need me to remind you again, Walt, or how drunk are you? Listen, I got it. He starts making a barbecue bacon cheeseburger with an onion ring on it. Toasting only the top bun, but making sure to put the tomato and the lettuce on different sides of the patty so it doesn't slide out like it does for everybody else. You join them at the table when you bring it. Yep. You are now all at the table with drinks and food. Now I want a hamburger. Carry on. <laughs> it's a damn good burger. So do, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> so Tabitha's probably already eaten. And she's had like essentially like the equivalent of the lumberjack slam. So there's like um Is that from Denny's? Like, yeah, so yeah. like there's the um How often do you go to Denny's that you're quoting the menu? Everything I, was, I know what it is. I was just at Norm's, which is a diner chain out here in California, uh, and they had a lumberjack slam, like a lumberjack breakfast on the menu. And I was there because I finally got to LARP for the first time since the plague happened. Last time I was in a Denny's was 2013. Uh, It's uh, Mike Leader's magical school LARP. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But, um, uh, no, so like there's like the like little pancake bits soaked in syrup, and like this is where the bacon used to be, and like the smear of egg yolk, and like a little piece of like grilled ham that she hasn't quite gotten to. And like it's clear that she has like this huge meal because that's ballast for all the drinking that she's been doing. I almost went breakfast for Savannah. <laughs> uh. Which is. <laughs> Which is the other thing I'll mention before Judith goes. Tabitha and Judith also have a collection of ridiculously ostentatious, mar- ostentatious margarita glasses because this is a tourist island. The yeah. stem is like this long and you can put soup in them. And they're like neon green, lime yellow. I was thinking the same. Thank you. I feel Harry, like it's possible. Judith has finished her thermos of sangria pretty quickly after what happened has had some cocktails and decided to have a salad because she doesn't realize how drunk she is. However, this is the place Walt works. They do bring you a salad, but it's like, you know. I mean, still, if you don't have protein and carbs, you're still going to be drunk as fuck. Oh, it's a cob. Got chicken. And so it's got like of lettuce. fried chicken on top and a whole head of lettuce. Hmm? That's still Perfect. not enough. Anyway. Cherry tomatoes. Still not enough. Also, puking up greens is gross. Anyway. I don't think I've ever done that. I, I have. Try it. No, you shouldn't. You really shouldn't. It's bad. Anyway. Uh... What's Yuri got? A tuna melt. Did you make the tuna melt, Walt? Yeah, I guess so. Of course he did. He kind of just. Does it look like you reluctantly made the tuna melt? No. (laughs) He's more of a patty melt guy, but. Pamela probably ordered a white linen for her drink. Oh, yeah. Walt works here, which means it's a tuna melt, but the tuna's a patty. Like a fish stick, but big. I mean, Yuri would probably eat fish sticks. On his sandwich, anyway. <laughs> what about Walt? What? what does Walt eat? Nothing. He's on. He's working. What is Walt eating out of his flask? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's gogurt. It's the first gogurt. <laughs> Walt is real. You've realized by now, too, Walt. You're down two flasks. I thought he was down three flasks. Well, he knows one disappeared into the street, but the other two shouldn't have. Our child consumes gogurt. I cannot imagine. Why does our child eat gogurt last? Isn't that what she gets out of the pouches? No, gogurt's the tube. So I, I would like for <laughs> Yuri to have brought a rep- Google a rep- gogurt. 
That was such a weird sentence. Uh, <laughs> Yuri would like to have replaced one of Walt's flasks. It's this very old, vintage, round flask with a dent in it. It might be a bullet dent. Mm. Might be a bullet dent. The table is yours, and you cannot, despite how hard you try, Judith, or any of the rest of you, just put this behind you. And is pulsing at the front of your brains, both what happened, what the voice has said, and the new power inside of you, and a burning desire to find and kill monsters. So, Pam Pamela didn't see the the person. You all saw the wizard. Oh, we did. Okay. Yeah, he stepped out into the street. You saw the sigil for Warlock, and then suddenly you couldn't walk right and fell in a pile like a fucking Monty Python comedy skit. Um, we should probably figure out who that guy was. The one with the face tattoo? Yeah. Give yeah, me it was questions. really weird, Walt. You don't, have, you don't have arm spasms. Also, I don't know of any guys with a face tattoo. You think he'd be working in my industry, you know, with well, a face tattoo? Maybe it was like so. I also don't have a face tattoo, but I do now. To you, maybe it's the same thing. Like he doesn't. It's invisible. Oh God, I sound like an idiot. <sighs> All right, yeah, I have. Each... Go ahead. I have three questions. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? And what the fuck was that? Clearly, monster. Two, if you look in mirrors, you don't see the sigil on yourselves. If you look through a reflection at your fellow party members, you don't see the sigil. You only see it when you look at them with your actual eyes. Clearly, it's not visible to the general public. I agree with... I'm sorry, I don't know if I got your name. Who? It, the bandana man? Oh, Me? Yuri. Uh, yes, I am Yuri Glesov. Hi, I'm Judith Burns. Um, what does Judith burn, though? Pardon? What do you burn? You said Judith Burns. It's just my last name. You, you, so oh. nothing, nothing you in get, particular. You get smacked in the back of the head, Yuri. I'm Walt, but you can call me anytime. Don't. I highly don't suggest it. We can discuss that later. Uh, what is? She says that to Pamela, but she doesn't know Pamela's name. So <laughs> she says, "And what do I call you?" To Pamela. Uh, oh, my name's Pamela. Okay. And you're Tabitha. So, Pamela, Tabitha, Yuri, Walt. Okay. And definitely don't call Walt. Not recommended. Oh, yeah. so we, we really have something to talk about later. All right. Speaking of uh, strange tattoos, I would like to point out that above my shop, someone has graffitied a symbol. Pretty sure it means safe haven, but I don't know. Interesting. Well, it must have always been there. Did not put it there. I mean, you can admit it, like how I put for a good time, call and then my phone number in the lady's bathroom. Mm, and all the signs that I put up are a bit um, more inconspicuous than giant black marker. I was wondering why you always volunteered to clean the women's restroom. They let him in the women's bathroom? To clean, yeah. Everyone gets cleaning duty. It's a restaurant. Well, the, wait the waitress doesn't do it right. Uh, regardless, I agree with Yuri. It's definitely a monster. And do we really need to know anything past that? It's a monster. We need to 
kill it, apparently. What else would you do with it? I mean, yeah, kill it, but, like, fuck, like, just, fuck. How do we get here? Maybe there's other people like us around. Maybe? How, how, how do we find them? Perhaps uh, the mark on the head. We look for their markings? I mean, it would be gonna easier. Be honest. Go ahead. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, this is a pretty small town. I think we're at Like a hundred people? Oh, I think she said we're it. Oh. So I was just, sorry, I thought the sentence went a different direction. Oh no, no, I I did I was just like Oh, oh. sorry. No, it's okay. Um Um you on don't that comment. Know. Sorry. Go ahead, oh, I was just gonna say you don't you don't know until you you look. On the tail of that comment, I don't remember who, but somebody has a background in the Heralds. It might have been Steve. Oh, Steve. Uh, I have patron. That's the one. I have two points. Uh, anybody else have it? And if so, at what level? Uh, a lot of arsenal, apparently. Yes, you do. Yeah, I had arsenal and patron in backgrounds. How much patron, Yuri? Dose. You both have two, so you both just hear a faraway whisper in your heads. Yes, you are all. Or... Wait, why do I have so many points in Arsenal if I don't know how to use a gun? Uh, <laughs> uh, Pamela does, like, an eye roll, and she's like, or the funny voices in my head could tell me that you are correct, Tabitha. We are it. I also heard the funny voice. I heard a serious voice. This is, uh, in the street? And it wasn't the same one that said that you can't bring outside liquor in here. So Just was now it I Sheriff heard... O'Malley? Shut up. <laughs> I just now heard voice, and then um, earlier, before developing super crowbar of awesome smacking. You still have that, by the way, and it has taken a form that you enjoy. It no longer looks like a crowbar. It looks like whatever you think looks like a cool smashing weapon. I will call it crowbar. Does it have a cool look crow like emblazoned on it? Oh, it has a crowbar emblazoned on it. Wait, the word does it crowbar still does... look like a crowbar. Is crowbar spelled not at correctly? all? <laughs> okay, what is what does it look like? Um, oh god, let me see. Uh, and is crowbar in English or Russian? Or Ukrainian? Or Ukrainian? The it's it's a little pictogram of a crowbar. It's Wait, just... so it's a picture of a crowbar on your crowbar. <laughs> Okay. I have no further questions. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it looks like a giant, I don't know, like um, giant machete, maybe? Yeah. I'll maybe. take it. Um, and it, it, it does, it has the little pictogram of a crowbar. I will call it crowbar, but it is now clearly knife. Interestingly, it looks like a machete to all of you, except you've gotten two random comments, Yuri, about you're not you're off work, Yuri. Why are you, why are you bringing your work tools to the restaurant? Because the people still see it as a crowbar. Fantastic. <clears throat> I think that uh, people still see crowbar as crowbar and not as giant damaging knife. Because they ask me why I'm bringing tools. I tell them one can never be too prepared.
Alright, well look. Shit's fucked, right? We know that. This is a crap world, right? I think we have the chance to change that. My life's pretty sweet. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. But what do we actually do? We <sighs> find them and we end things for the betterment of society. Yeah, and we don't pay any alimony either. Uh, well, I think... I need Walt to say in a Sylvester... Go. I need Walt to say in a Sylvester Stallone accent from the Expendables, hunt him, find him, kill him. I'll do it later. Um, Walt, I still think Dolores is going to expect money regardless of how many monsters you hunt. Here's a here's a tip for all of you. Don't marry the sheriff's sister. I don't think that's legal for me anyway, so that's fine. I have um, found definitely not in the nineties. <laughs> I have found that all cops are bastards. Potentially. Uh but um do we like talk to a priest? Do we have an exorcism performed? Like, any ideas? Because my type of research is not very helpful in this instance. Oh, actually, she has a three in research. Um, I don't know where on the island she would go, though, because there's no internet. Uh, there's no internet anywhere except dial-up. <laughs> you would go to the library? I don't know. But also, like, ha what, <clears throat> what even would you research? <laughs> like, Yeah, this isn't about research as much as it is about tracking down the dude who disappeared into the crowd. You would know standard procedure, except everyone except, I guess, maybe Tabitha would know. On the island, standard procedure is if there's a major crime, they shut down the ferries. Nobody's leaving unless they steal a boat. Oh, fair. You all can sense your abilities, if that would help you track. You would go, I don't know, I think maybe I can try a thing. If anyone has an edge to be useful here um judith could try to see where it's going to be <laughs> maybe even potentially like when i used pinpoint previously i saw the warlock so maybe she could try to focus on where the warlock is going to be and maybe even what they do to defeat the warlock in that particular future i don't know how uh how helpful you want this to be. Pinpoint is specifically for weaknesses, but for C, let me look at this one. She used pinpoint previously, which showed her the warlock. Does anyone have discern? So not discern. I've delve, but that's the past. I have okay, trail. C. But pinpoint, and that's an interesting point that would occur to Judith. Pinpoint tells you a creature's weakness or where its power comes from. That's when you saw the warlock. Yes, so that's why she wants to find the warlock. Yes. Because she's assuming it's the monster's power source or it's summoner. Or it's summoner. I'm not going to get into why Judith Burns' erotica writer knows what a summoner might be in that type of... I'm going to leave that alone. You can read her books. Um... Do you want me to roll for C? Yes, page 156 of the PDF. Oh, and uh, we figured out why I couldn't find anything. It's because I was looking at the wrong book. Uh, 
Uh, three successes. Okay. So this gives you the ability to make th uh, three extra rolls to beat up how you want for a specific action to give you a better result, which could be used to track the mage later on. Use them when you decide you want them. Basically gives you advantage on attempts to find the mage. It doesn't immediately tell you where he is, but it, you feel, you know, you have a better chance of finding him now. Than you so can. for um, a very simple example, if we were following them down an alleyway and it branched off into two, she might have an intuition as to which way to go. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Or if you don't have powers, just track. Someone like this might leave a, a trail somehow. I've got I've got some people I can call, see if they've seen someone who's been trying to go to ground. Uh, by which I mean I'm gonna try and utilize um, my two dots of underworld contacts to try and be like, hey, any shady people come through town recently? Yep. Okay. Would say so break out your cell phone, but uh, is there a role I should make for that? You are muted. Yep, I was. Context plus pick a social. All right. Uh, I'll do manipulation because I'm trying to get information without being, like, made. Oh, that's a ten. And three sevens. Jesus. Five successes. Okay. Who else? And what are you using? I've heard nothing from Walt. I don't really have any applicable powers for this. Gills either? Not really. Okay. Uh, and that's not here. With the description that you have, Tabitha, you are able. To narrow down the fact that this person is new to the island but is not a tourist because they've purchased real estate recently or at least someone purchased it in their name to start uh and the address get of the property yeah okay <laughs> uh, i will relay that to the group It's out in the woods. It's a nice house. So maybe surveil it a little bit? I don't really want to go in guns blazing because that's how people get dead. I have always gone guns blazing. I mean, 
I don't know what you're talking. Yes, exactly. Well, it really depends on our skill set and how we want our story to be told. I mean, do any of us actually have any experience with killing anything? I mean, like a lobster. Take that as a no. Chicken. Small things. I can take that as a no. All right. And she finishes whatever drink is in front of her. And she's like, I honestly am not sure how to go about this, but I know that whatever that was is dangerous. And we need to protect that's all i've got ideally surveilling sounds reasonable but i do not write spy novels well the only way off the island is by boat right correct in the 90s this way this way bridge was not in a usable state is there a way we can, I don't know, like lock down the boats or something? Probably a wise idea. I don't know anything about boats. There's this dude, Willie, that sells weed sometimes. You're telling me there is a weed dealer named Willie. Well, in the future, he's a weed dealer. I don't know if he's a weed dealer in the past. I think he was a connection of my other characters. <laughs> I mean, let's go... He probably went home. Or if not, his house is still there. All right. So do we just rent a car or some horses from somewhere and tally-ho? I guess. Sure. Do we do that now? Do we do that in the morning? I think we should do it under the cover of night. Okay, so like now. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go hunt a monster. Like now? She says questioningly. <laughs> yes. Wait, if monsters are awake at night, perhaps we should hunt when they're asleep. Yeah, I mean, you don't know if warlocks only operate at night, but it was daytime when. You fought it in the street. It was early evening. It was not dark. Especially in the summertime. It got dark when you got to the bar. All right, so we're gonna need some cameras. We're gonna need a car with a dark paint job. We're gonna need some flashlights. Did, Did you say paint job? Sorry, <laughs> carry on, Ben. Tibs and the flashlights.
Okay. So you have flashlights. Your arsenal is full of common equipment, and it doesn't have to be guns in relation to your earlier comment about how you can't shoot a gun while I have an arsenal. Because you have an arsenal of whatever weapons you want to be in it. That's for each of you as dots in that power. Three dots um, in Mafia arsenal. Okay. Is there a map of the island that's easily obtainable? Probably oh, yeah. a tourist Kiosk, map. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm going to take what I heard about this guy's address and sort of um, do the best I can to figure out what is the best angle of approach so we can get close without being seen. Okay. Do you have dots in Arsenal too? Pretty sure most, if not all of you do. Uh, that is a background? Yeah. I have a dot in exposure. I do I have, not have arsenal. I have arsenal. I have resources. Apparently I invested my money in guns to hide from the IRS. That's a strategy. I said it didn't have to be guns. I don't know what else it would but be. Yes. <laughs> if you don't have arsenal, as long as you have at least a little bit of resources, it's not hard to get black pants and a black turtleneck, black gloves, and a black ski mask on an island that has a um, uh, gnarly winter period. I also have gasoline. We can set fire to everything. Oh. Fire's good. Okay. So we have a basic, very basic plan. Is everyone ready to enact the plan, or is there more you want to do first? Are you gathering anything from your arsenals, for instance, besides flashlights and dark clothing? I want to grab my, like, fillet knife. Hey, okay, Benny. Camera? Camera, yes. Polaroid um, or one of those fancy new digital ones or standard film camera? The nicest one I can get my hands on. The okay. nicest one you stole today. Yes. Um, whatever small firearm Judith has in her possession. And as far as melee goes, probably whatever comes to hand in a desperate survival situation is what she will grab so not much prep on the melee okay is that it anybody else Perhaps we should have bandages. First aid kit, yes. I have plenty of electrical tape. Okay. So, you are heading out there at night, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Oh yeah, how are you getting there? Just for fluff. You illegally took a vehicle last time and blew it up. What about this time? I've always wanted to ride the ponies. I I don't think Pamela will let us Hold risk on. her horses. Hold on. Pamela, if we can take the horses, don't say anything.
fine with me. You want to take the horses? Where are they all going? I do not know where Judas went. I do not know where Pamela went. Okay. Turn. What exactly monster are we going after? Oh, you yes. know, the symbol said warlock. That's what we're gonna find out. That's what this mission is for. Do some recon, get some good information, and then I guess decide what we do next after that. Okay, this date. So, you arrive at the house, apparently on horseback. Which I'm sure is amusing for anyone who has no idea how to ride a horse. And it's the same house, only it's still in good shape because it's only recently been built in the last five or ten years. It's the same house where one day multiple PCs will die terribly. Wow. You arrive at the same edge of the forest. And it's the first time you tried to drive your Jeep in there and got shot at. But this time all the lights are on. And it looks warm and welcoming. It doesn't look creepy and lost. And full of darkness. It's like a house. Like any of the other really nice houses on the island. You sure this is the place? That's what my contacts told me. It's got like three birdhouses. Why would that... anyone need so many birdhouses? Maybe Cause... if it's with birds? Because they like birds. You know, birds like bagels. They just like them with cream cheese. What the fuck did you just say? What is uh, bagel? I, think, I don't have to I think it's when two that. soldiers, you know, two sides of soldiers fight each other. I don't have to dignify that with a response. We all know what a bagel is. Sorry, Taylor has no comment. Uh, um, what is okay? But what is bagel? Is bagel like a group of bags? No, it is a round circle bread with a hole in it. A donut? No, it's bread, not fried oh. dough. Bagel. Bread comes from dough. A bagel. Yes, bagel. 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 Battle. Big hole. Look, I, I have a big gun hole. Bag I, hole. I have a gun and I will use it. That's great. I have crowbar. I will use it too. Lovely. Let's All move right. on to the Let's other part. kill this guy. Of this. Yeah. Hands in, team. And I think a good place to stop for the session is on a word I'm not going to say and make this debate even worse. Murder! <laughs> I'm just glad I have an ally in the mispronunciation of that word. I'm just going to say. Humanity clings to a comfortable illusion that the world belongs to mankind and that they lead lives of free-willed individuality, completely unaware that they occupy a world of grim mysteries inhabited by monsters. But until we return you to this monster-haunted world, there are many other ways our show can enchant and entertain you. 
tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, we have Curse of Sonia, which is the Curse of Straw Gender Flipped. At uh, 11 p.m. we have Eastern, we have Octung Cthulhu 2D20 Session 0 slash 1. On a Monday, and it is Monday. On Tuesday, we have Coriolis, the Third Horizon, at 9 p.m. On Wednesday, we are gearing up for Transformers, the following Wednesday at 9 p.m. Uh, no show this Thursday. On Friday, we have Traveler at 10 p.m. Eastern. No show this Saturday. And then next Sunday, we'll see. There may be a one-shot coming your way. Normally, though, Thursday, we would have Dark Sun at 9 p.m. Call of Cthulhu Children of Fear at 5. Traveler at 10 pathfinder 2e strange aeons at nine on saturday and of course return to hunter and now hunters let everyone know who you are and where you can be found in between now and next session here and in other cool places hello i have been yuri glasov i am now ambrose you can find me on the internet as am changeling you can find me on etsy at thornkind but otherwise i cannot be perceived Hello, my name is Rachel. You can find me pretty much everywhere as Stolen Fires. Uh, yeah, you will see me tomorrow running the Session Zero of Akshan Cthulhu. It is a really cool mashup of uh, the Mythos plus World War II. Uh, that's, this is going to be sort of a little short run, four or five session palette cleanser game. Uh, in between Delta Green and Dune, but it should be uh, really cool. Lots of uh, Nazi punching hijinks will ensue. Uh, you can also find me this Wednesday over at Plastic Age Plays doing a DD. and d And then on Friday, playing some Traveler. I'm looking forward to that. And then I will be back here at some point. I yeah, that's my schedule for the week. Uh, you can also find me on my own channel, uh, Stolen Fires, where I stream Dragon Age. And sometimes give spoilers for the campaign I will eventually run. What what system are you using for Octung Cthulhu? There's like three you can use for it. Uh, this is the specific Octung Cthulhu game by that title, published by um, Modifius. It is going to be the 2D20 system. Um, cool. Yeah. Zdras Vluce, Mendoza Vult, Ben, Big Dad, uh, Chief Yeoman of Big Dad Industries. Uh, that was, hello, I am, my name is Ben. Um, and Yuri's native tongue. Um, I was Walt Cordell tonight. Uh, I have a stream coming up on Big Dead Industries on the 31st, which I believe is a Wednesday. Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition, run by the Twitter account, House Tremere. I get to play in it. I, it's going to be fun. Um, I'm playing La Sombra. That's right. Also, I like this game never going home. It's cool. It's Eldritch World War One. <laughs> That's it. And hello, I am Rosie, regular signs mom, Brigadier Duchess of Big Dead Industries. You can find me on Twitter at mom underscore sized or at odd duck dice on Twitter, Instagram, Etsy, and TikTok. And I am considering making some sort of swirly white dice with red paw prints on them because I believe Never Going Home is run with D6s. And there is a part of that called blood in the snow. So bloody red paw prints, white dice, makes me very happy. I make dice, check out my Etsy. I enjoy stuff like that. And I hope you do too. And I hope you have a good week. You can find me on Thursdays and Sundays, generally here on Vocal Tales, doing ridiculous things. producer oh rosie ends this one. Oh, you mean savannah i'm so used to producing myself
our producer is not here, so whoever's next, go. It's it's our producer. Our producer is, is last. Oh, so it's the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Savannah wraps it. I'm not used to only five yet. I'm Tyler. Ultra Checkles online, and I can be found next running Curse of uh, Sonia tomorrow at 7 p.m. Come check it out. Once again, we'd like to give a very special thanks to Dark Somnium Music, Savic, Epidemic Sound, and myself for providing some of the awesome music you heard tonight. And to Roll20 Tabletop for providing an excellent virtual platform for us to run many of our games. And last but not least, a heartfelt thanks to you, our listeners and fans, for both tuning in and experiencing our story with us. Until next time in two weeks, chase warlocks and listen to the voices in your head. Good night.